Mm, don't think so. That background looks a little bit... Uh, yeah. What to do, what to do, what to do... Oh, I know. That's a bit better. Not perfect, but better. Hello, thank you for clicking on this video. It's wonderful to have you on a very breezy day on the east side of my patio trying to escape what could distort the microphone and I'm trying to avoid that. So what is this all about? Well, in the background you see my Dendrobium antenatum in gorgeous bloom and no caterpillars got to it this time around. I was faster. <laughs> Actually, my garlic alcohol was faster, but yes, that is in the background. But the subject du jour is on the little table because Jose Joseph had a question a while ago. Is there a need for ventilation holes in semi-hydroponic pots? I'm paraphrasing. The comment is on the screen. Jose, we discussed that in the comments and I hope it answered your question. So why am I doing this video? Well, I had a very similar question in an email and I gave the same answer pretty much which then inspired me to do a video about this, just in case somebody else had a similar question or in future will come across the situation and ask themselves that question. So here we go. Do semi-hydroponic pots need to have ventilation in them? Like my little clear example here from back in the day, when I used to grow partially in organic media and not in LECA and self-watering as I am doing now. Well, here we are. You can do anything with your pot if you're going to be in semi-hydroponics. However, you need a reservoir. Without a reservoir, it is not semi-hydroponics. If you have a pot like this and you want to grow in semi-hydroponics, you need to make sure that there is something underneath that is constantly filled with water. This way, we are creating a hybrid sort of semi-hydroponics because these ventilation holes are there for aeration, right? And orchid roots and air, it always seems to go hand in hand. Whereas what we have to keep in mind is aeration is in actual fact a term that yes, epiphytes love, but it is the oxygen in the air that the orchid roots draw from, not the air itself, but the oxygen in it and water has oxygen in it. So when it comes to semi-hydroponics, by all means, if this is how you like to grow your orchids and possibly have extremely high humidity all year round with plenty of rain, this could definitely be an option, but then it's not really semi-hydroponics. It is a hybrid that works for you in your environment. Bear with me. <laughs> a semi-hydroponics pot looks like this. Not necessarily specifically this one. It doesn't have to be clear, but it can be, but... A semi-hydroponics pot has a reservoir. So here are two holes. The rest would be filled with media and the orchid. And this part down here is the reservoir. I hope that was in focus, but you see where I'm getting at. This is a pot that had absolutely no holes in it. I drilled two holes in it and I created myself a semi-hydroponic pot because now I've got a reservoir no ventilation holes. We can create a reservoir and then create ventilation holes above the holes of the reservoir if we so choose and if that is another option for an environment that is super, super high in humidity with a lot of rain. And probably by the cadence of my voice, you already know which word is coming next. But... <laughs> Let me show you that if you are trying to do a semi-hydro pot with ventilation holes and then you have a clear pot like I do, so you don't want algae to be, you know, ruining the aesthetics of your pot, you get yourself a mask, pretend this pot fits, and suddenly there is a gap between the pot that your orchid is in and the outer mask that you would like to have as decoration or to ward off algae or both. So now you have a gap, you have a reservoir, everything should be fine, you have ventilation holes. And all this is going to work just fine. We can reuse all our pots that have holes in them. But the orchid roots are gonna love this as well because they are gonna come out of all these holes.
They are not going to stay within the perimeter of the pot because down here happens to be a reservoir. If we go back to the example of our hybrid, you know, we've got the semi-hydroponic reservoir at the bottom and then we do ventilation holes at the top. The orchid roots are going to go where they're going to go and they are going to go through the holes, which if this is where it's going to end and you're happy with the setup and it's working for you and your environment and there is no other mask around it, know that, you know, you've got your semi-hydro hybrid here and then roots are going to grow out over the edge. So you have a deposit, you have ventilation and roots are going to grow through the holes. And that is the question whether you want that because here are two downsides for that to be happening. The first one being repotting. Orchid roots in semi-hydroponics grow extremely vigorously. That is why this is such a great way of growing orchids. It's just roots, roots, roots for days and repotting is then a necessity on a regular schedule. Now imagine you've got your vigorous orchid in there. It's time to repot and you need to clean up the root ball. All the roots that are in here, they don't just grow out and make pulling the orchid out easy for you. They'll grow out, they'll grow back in, or they'll crawl and circle around the pot, or they'll go into the reservoir halfway with a branch of the same root, etc., etc. It can get very, very complicated unless you're okay with being radical on the root ball clean up during a repot like I sometimes am and just yank the orchid out of the pot and whatever gives, gives. If you don't have a hybrid situation like this going on, but you have your pot with ventilation holes in a mask like that, with the gaps in between the pot and the mask itself, know that the roots are going to still grow out of those holes in exactly the same way I just described, but they will happily attach themselves to the mask inside. They will start <laughs> enjoying all that beautiful space in there, attach themselves and go maybe around and around, also into the reservoir. So when it comes time to repotting in this instance, what do we do? We can be radical, we can go in with a knife, we can try and dislodge the root from the inner side of the mask, and it's all a little bit cumbersome and scary. <laughs> At least, for me, it would be scary. So, when it comes to semi-hydroponics, ideally, you don't want ventilation holes in your pot, even if you were to make it a hybrid with the reservoir intact and then put little ventilation holes around the edge, you want to make sure your pot is closed. This does not exempt any roots from growing out of the bottom. Roots will grow where they find any little nook and cranny to get through and they will eventually grow out of the bottom of the pot and into a reservoir as would be the case in a self-watering setup. Self-watering is exactly like semi-hydroponics with the exception that the reservoir is detached from the actual pot and not combined all into one. But it is a form of semi-hydroponic growing. So you see, if you have yourself a pot like this and you want to grow it in semi-hydroponics, please do not be discouraged and think that there's only one way, the only way to grow semi-hydroponically. But know what you're up against and ask yourself if you can make your life a little bit easier when it comes time to repotting and making sure that despite the damage that's going to be done on a repot session, and we always do damage no matter how careful we are, at least you've already minimized what could be complete carnage and a decimation of a root system simply because of ventilation holes. Ventilation holes in pots are great if you're growing in a wet dry cycle. Semi-hydroponics is not that kind of a setup. Very, very rarely is semi-hydroponics tweaked to a degree where it is okay to let the media dry out in the event of an orchid going dormant, but it would not be the case if you were using it with LECA. Lava rock is something that can be tweaked in semi-hydroponics to be somewhat wicking and serves as a great media for that during the time frame where an orchid is in active growth 
and or blooming. But should that orchid go dormant, lava rock in semi-hydroponics is okay to let go dry. Sometimes not for a long period of time that's another video altogether but ventilation holes are in my opinion exclusively there for any setup that is created to cultivate an orchid based on a wet dry cycle so despite having answered everything in the comments or at least i'm assuming i've answered everything in a comment because i didn't hear another question back but that email that came through had a similar question so this is the video as a reference in case i get the similar question one more time i hope that it was helpful i hope that i could somewhat demonstrate with empty pots with my beautiful dendrobium antenatum in the background that ventilation holes and semi-hydroponics is not a good idea simply because of the practicality of those ventilation holes not serving a purpose for the setup and definitely not when it comes time to repot for the purpose of being as careful with roots as possible. I hope that this video was helpful. If you think that anybody else would benefit from this question, then please feel free to share the video. I appreciate it. And in the event that you don't know of anybody, give this video a thumbs up. Then YouTube will know that this video is helpful and will try to recommend it to more and more people, which will then help me, which I really, really appreciate. If you have any questions with regards to what I just mentioned, the comments are there for a reason. Let's talk about specifics. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful day on one condition though, that you please stay safe. Take care, bye.